Good evening YouTube and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we'll be talking about injector replacement on my BMW E92 M3. My name's James Stone and in this guide I'll show you how to remove them, how to fit the new ones and essentially my thoughts on why you should change them. So stay tuned. So it is a pretty straightforward job to change these. It takes around an hour and a half to two hours. I must stress that following this guide is at your own risk. But hopefully by changing these, you're gonna prevent yourself some serious problems later down the line. So why am I changing the injectors? Well, I had no fault codes, nothing was wrong with the car. Everything working as you'd expect. Now, for those that have watched the one year recap video, which was I think about a year ago now, I made this comment. Number six injector failure now this isn't common for the e92s it's more known on the v10 m5s and what essentially happens is the injectors stick open flood a bore make an absolute mess of everything and it's an engine rebuild now i've only heard of three cases of this happening so and at the time injector failure i'd heard of a case happening it was something that affected the v10 m5 m6 more it wasn't something that really affected that i had seen the e92 there was the odd case of it but i had more than one person comment on that video saying yeah unfortunately james i did have injector failure complete engine destruction and then this year just I don't know why it just seems to have happened more and more and i put a post up on the owners club saying look guys i'm paranoid i'm thinking about changing these we know the shells are an issue we know the actuators are an issue but the actuators don't cause any long-term damage should i get these changed and much to my surprise i had quite a few people comment saying yep i've had one fail i've had an issue with one and i thought you know what I need to address this just for my own peace of mind it's not like the shells where it's a 1500 pound day out and yeah that is where it leads us to this video on injector replacement so what is a fuel injector well for those of you that don't know it supplies petrol to the engine inside there it repeatedly open and closes very quickly depending on the demand so at low rpm low throttle input it's very slow lets a small amount of petrol out the fuel pump in the tank keeps the pressure, so it literally is just essentially an on and off valve. The higher up the RPM you go, or the more horsepower you're requiring, the faster these will open and close. When they do get to that high RPM side of things, that's when the rumors are of them sticking. And when they do stick, it just allows all the fuel to go in, even when you don't want it in there. So what causes these to fail? Well, you have one per cylinder. So in a V8 car like in the E92 M3, you have eight of them. I actually haven't found any solid evidence as to what causes the failure, but I have seen enough now to know that they do fail. There is talk that because the E92 doesn't have a separate fuel filter, there's just one built into the tank that particles get in, it gets stuck. I'm more with the comments I've seen where potentially there's something inside like a coating on them that wears down and as it does eventually it starts sticking and obviously when you are fifth, sixth, seventh gear, flat out, top RPM, these are working pretty hard and fast. So for me, I don't know, is, is, is replacing the injectors a, a full blown method? Is it something that we should look at putting an aftermarket fuel filter in? I don't know, but what I will say is for what these cost to replace, and given that my cars are 2011 with 74,000 miles, I was happy to get them changed, to be honest with you. And like I say, it's not like it's a massive job which we'll go over in this video. So I'll quickly come back to the fuel filter in the tank. Now, in the E46 M3 that I've got, you have a pickup pump in the fuel tank, which essentially moves the fuel from the pump into the injectors. And in between that, underneath the car, there's like a long cartridge filter. It's a serviceable item, you change it, I think it's something like every 50 or 30,000 miles. I haven't even done 10,000 in mine since it's been changed. Um, so it's not something I've changed in the ownership since it had its inspection two service done, but in the E92 M3, it doesn't have that. Apparently it's just a lifelong filter that's in the actual pump itself. It's not a serviceable item. Generally, if a filter fails, it clogs up and you'd have a fuel supply issue. But from what some people are saying is particles can unfortunately go through that filter, end up getting into the system. But again, I haven't seen any solid evidence where people have taken these apart and said, that's 100% the reason. All the diagnostic that I've seen so far is people have had the car cut out, 
run really badly. Upon inspection, they've removed the spark plug just to be greeted by a cylinder completely filled with unleaded, which obviously not a good sign. So what does it cost to replace an injector? Well, I think I got quite lucky with the set I bought. ECS tuning I got mine from had them at $25 each, which is for a genuine Bosch unit, very, very cheap. They've actually gone back up now, it looks like to $55. And I mean, you've got to buy eight of them. There's no point doing one or two. You might as well replace the full set while you're there. I think you'd be mad not to. I've heard from BMW they're around £220 each. And they don't have any BMW logos on them. So these is one of the old ones that I pulled out from the car and it literally just has the Bosch logo on it. There is no BMW markings on it absolutely anywhere. So I can only assume, which is pretty common with manufacturers, that BMW approached Bosch, asked them to make the injectors for the car or had a suitable one on shelf. And this is how we've ended up with this. So if you do want to buy them from BMW, Again, I don't have factual evidence for this, but I would say you're paying four times the box uh, price even, sorry, for just the box. So yeah, I would just stick with the Bosch ones. I say I've fitted them in mine. Try and get them from somewhere that's a decent specialist that sells parts, because there are fake injectors out there. It's very easy to get sucked into that with eBay, and you don't know if the seller's genuine or not, or at least with ES, ECS even tuning in America. Massive company. I'm pretty confident I've got genuine Bosch units. And when they arrived, they came in the Bosch box, all sealed with the Bosch labels and all in the little Bosch bag. And they've even got, you probably won't be able to see it, but like that unique ID code printed on them as well. So I'm pretty confident that this is the real deal that I've put in the car. So the big one, what happens if you are flat out or even normal driving and the injector seizes open. Well, as I mentioned, it will fill the cylinder completely with petrol. Now this is, for some I imagine, they think, oh well, that's all right, it burns it, it'll just run a bit lumpy. Unfortunately, it's not the case. If you completely fill the cylinder with petrol, it ends up in some form of hydrolock and it can't compress, and what it does is it'll bend the rod, it can crack the liners, it just makes an absolute mess. Like, it's probably, I'd say, it's worse than the shell damage, because it's it's pretty serious when it happens. You can throw a rod out the side if there's nowhere for it to go. I mean, again, equally as bad if it goes wrong, but a lot less to fix. If you're really lucky and one is just semi-sticking, which I saw a thread on the owner's club that a gentleman said he managed to pull over, got it to a garage, removed it, put a new injector in and all's been fine. But then I saw another case where a guy had it go, put another injector in and the car was just running low on compression on a cylinder because it's potentially bent the con rod. So, yeah, pretty serious if they do fail, especially if it fails in a way, like say where it's permanently open and just fills the cylinder with petrol. So as mentioned, it's gonna take anywhere from one to two hours, depending on your experience level. I did it in about an hour and 45 minutes and that was including filming bits, so I'd be pretty confident. Hour, hour and a half if you're comfortable with doing things and obviously nothing seized or goes wrong, that you'll have the old injectors out and the new injectors in. And like I say, I didn't think it was a massively technical job, but I do have to stress, obviously follow this guide at your own risk. And I'll overlay now a clip of the tools that I used for the job. The next thing I'd really, really suggest doing is starting the job on a stone cold engine. Because you're gonna be unplugging the fuel line, which is about six inches from the exhaust manifold, not only is everything boiling hot to touch, but when you do disconnect the fuel line, you are gonna get a chance of fuel spraying down there. And the last thing you want is that igniting, because it's really gonna ruin your day. So top tip, make sure the car is stone cold before getting underway with the work. The first step is to remove the intake elbow. Now, on my E92 M3, the previous owner fitted the K&N elbow and filter set up. So I haven't got a guide on removing that, but for me, it was just a case of undoing the Jubilee clips and the hose clamp, and that elbow was then out of the way. 
The next thing you're gonna to need to remove is the plenum, or I guess some call it the air box as well. The big blob of plastic when you open the engine bay in the E92 M3. There's eight Jubilee clips on there. Now, I wouldn't say it's difficult. I would just say if you haven't done it before, use some extensions. It's not a hard job, it's just fiddly. The best tip for getting those off I've found is six mil small socket, two extension bars, little 3 8 ratchet, and then I use a pen torch just so I can put it down between the injector rail and you can actually see where the heads are when you're putting it through. But like I say, when you're actually working on it, it does make a lot of sense, but it's frustrating more than anything if you are new to removing the plenum. Next, you'll need to unclip the air inlet temperature sensor, which is just on the side of the plenum intake elbow. And then there's a breather that's directly underneath that. And there's a big oil breather on the back. And like I said, the breather pipes just unplug and the AIT sensor or air inlet temperature sensor has got a little prong, press it in, slide it out, and then that's all your cabling out of the way. So with those undone, you can now pull the whole plenum assembly. If yours has never been off before or it's been a long time since it's been off, they can get sort of stuck on the boots and you're pulling it and you think, oh no, this doesn't feel like it's gonna come, but it will go eventually. So if you've got the standard plenum, I was happy to pull it, had no issues. If you've got a nice fancy carbon fiber intake, like the Carbonus one, nom nom nom, I would recommend removing more of the scuttle panel or even putting some masking tape on top of the plenum chamber because as you lift it, it can sort of catch on the cables that run across and where all the cabin filters a place just to stop you causing any damage to it. So with the plenum chamber removed and put to one side, I do stress keep it somewhere out of the way where stuff isn't gonna fall in it. If a screw, nut, stone, bolt, whatever, if you're working on the driveway falls in there and you don't realize and you start it up and your engine eats it, it's gonna be game over. So for me, I open the boot, put a big black bin liner in there and put all the components nice and tidy out of the way so nothing can get inside the airbox or cause any potential issues. So you should now be able to see the fuel rail and it's got one side that's connected to the car, runs all the way around to the other bank. So you've got two fuel rail lines in there that are connected to the eight injectors. There are four bolts that hold the fuel rail in place. Now they're just a T30 Torx bit, nice and short thread. Be careful not to drop them down into the block when you undo them because it's gonna be a mission trying to find those again. But you undo those four and the rail will then be free. Now. When you do remove the rail, I strongly recommend getting your fingers in and around the injectors and just gently tugging. Again, it's gonna be a bit like the plenum. They won't just fall out. They will need a bit of persuasion, but do be careful not to yank at one angle or bend the fuel rail or damage an injector. Like I say, good even load on the rail, just wiggle it a little bit and they will just pop out. So with those injectors now just loose and out of the way, they can still sit just rested in the throttle bodies. You're now gonna need to disconnect the main fuel line. So if you go over on a UK car to the passenger side, you'll see the main supply for the fuel rail and it's got a little plastic gray clip and essentially you can just pry it off with your fingers. Once that's removed, you can then hold the rail with your left hand and push inwards on the black clip and the whole assembly will just slide out. Now when you do this, it's potentially worth just putting a bit of cloth or a rag down underneath it because a bit of fuel will spray out. I say on mine, not a lot at all. But again, this is what I mentioned with making sure the car's cold because if the exhaust manifold's red hot, fuel sprays out on there, there's a good chance you're gonna have a fire. So far from what you're gonna need on what should be a quite simple job. But like I say, once that's disconnected, you will now have the rail loose, you will have the main feed loose, and it's then just a case of unplugging the actual injector clips, the sort of power supply to them. And for those, I just used a little flathead screwdriver. You just lip them off of each side, a little bit fiddly, but they'll just pull out nice and easy. You shouldn't have to yank on the cables. Always hold the plug so you don't damage the loom. And then once all eight are released, you're then ready to remove from the car. So you should now be able to lift the fuel rail assembly, so both halves of the rail and all the injectors out of the way of the engine bay. So just carefully move your way out, try not to damage the tips of the injectors. Not such a problem if you're just gonna throw your old ones in the bin, but if you are gonna use them as a spare, it's worth looking after them, especially if you wanna have a good look at them once they're removed. So for me, I remove this into the garage now. Because I'm gonna have the fuel rail apart, because I'm gonna have the injectors out, I wouldn't be working on a a dusty floor or somewhere where I could get contamination into the brand new injectors. And for me, that was back in the workshop. Whether that's in the kitchen at home, depends how understanding your missus is, but I'd strongly advise doing it somewhere where it's very clean and you're not gonna get the risk of dirt or grit or anything getting into that rail. So it's quite simple. Once the rail is in your garage, 
flip it upside down, there'll be eight retaining clips, so one on each injector. Again, you can pop these off with your fingers if you've got sensitive skin, sensitive hands, you could use a flathead screwdriver, but I found I could just hold them, pull them off, and then it's just a case of wiggle the injector. I don't know whether you'll be able to see it here, but there's a little guide there, and that's what the clip is, but you just wiggle it out of the rail, O-ring will be pretty tight, and you will lose a bit of fuel on the bench. So that's something to bear in mind if you are doing it in the house, it might make a bit of a mess. But then the injectors all come out one at a time, put them to one side, and you're then ready to, for the reinstall. Installing the new injectors, well this is the old ones so I can show you, but you do need to be careful. On the new injectors, my ones came with this cap on them, so you remove that, just stops you get any crud or particles in there. Again, being very careful with the tip, especially when we go back to fitting them, you do not want to scuff or scratch these because you probably can't even see it on the camera, but the actual points in there are tiny. So you wouldn't want to scratch them or potentially close any of them up. To get the new injectors into the rail, I first took the rail outside, drained it into an oil drain tub so there was no fuel in it, and I put a tiny amount of two-stroke coil, not to the point where it was flooded, but put a bit on my finger, just wiped it around each O-ring. And the reason I did that is that when it then goes back into the rail, it doesn't catch or pinch or cause anything that leaks. The oil just helps it slide in and it's such a minute amount. Two stroke oil is gonna do no damage on that amount to any engine components if a bit did get in there. But like I say, I just put a light smear around there just to help it slide back into the injector rail. So once you've then pushed it into the rail, it is just a case of pushing it far enough that again, that tab lines up with the injector clip. Now. Do remember which way you remove them for the rail, because if you rotate them 180 degrees, put them all in, go back to the car, you're not gonna be able to fit them and you're not gonna be able to get the plugs back in to power them up. So pretty straightforward. You should now have all eight injectors in there. Again, I do have to stress, just be careful with handling the new injectors once it's all in the rail. So back in the engine bay, what I just said again, I will just keep <laughs> reconfirming, you do not wanna hit the tips or smack them on the engine. So what I did, I held one rail up high, gently maneuvered the others in, pushed them into the pocket, then took the other side and guided them into place. Because you have got the flexi hose on there, it doesn't have to go down together. You can have you take your time and make sure that obviously you don't catch it on any of the throttle bodies as you're aligning them into the hole. Once that's done, you then just fasten it all up with the four T30 torque bolts. Now they're 12 newton meters was the torque set and it came back looking online. And like I say, once they're all in, it should pretty much glide into place. If you're finding that the rail is not going in or you're really having to force it or the bolts aren't even pulling it down, potentially you've got something misaligned. I found with mine, with that two stroke oil on there, they literally popped in with light pressure, lined straight up on the bolt holes and did them up to the 12 newton meters. The only final thing with the injector power plug, so from the wiring loom, the little spring clip, you can actually seat back into position as if it's in its closed position because it will allow you to slide them onto the injectors and you should then hear the click, give it a light pull to make sure it's connected properly and it's all done. So for the rest of it, it is just all the uh, reverse and you just put everything back together, all your plenum back on, all your intake elbow, all your filter. And then when you go back into the car side of things and you're ready to start it, turn the ignition on, don't put your foot on the brake, and then turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. And what that'll do, I did it three times, it just allows the fuel pump to fill the rail up so you don't get sort of a hesitant or a misfire on start. Not that it should cause any damage, but mine just instantly fired on the button as if nothing could happen. So thanks for watching, I hope you guys found it helpful. And like I say, hopefully we can save some E92s from having this failure happen. I've opened up a thread on the Owners Club, which I'll put a link in the description. So if you do want to keep track of the conversation, there are a lot that have said it's worth doing. There are a lot of saying, are you going to change every part on the car? I get it. Do you know what I mean? Like, where do you stop with these things? They are an old motor and things do fail, but I'd seen enough now. I wanted to get it changed. I know I always run good fuel in it. Shell V power, wherever I can get it, always high grade. But... When that car was new and it was in warranty, a lot like the shells, do you think people worried about where they filled it up? Business people, 95 fuel, petrol stations that are supermarket fuel fill, who knows? And for me, it's done now. I think it's another benefit to looking after the car. It isn't horrifically expensive. I mean, I got lucky with the price on mine that all four, all four, all eight injectors even came in at 220 pound, which included delivery and import taxes. So 220 pound, 
I paid for eight injectors. Unfortunately, like I say, ESS Tuning have put these up now a little bit. They've doubled in price since it seems a few of us have bought them. But for me, it was a no-brainer. I just thought, get it done. It's another thing ticked off the list and hopefully it ensures that I'm going to have no sort of permanent engine failures later down the line. So thanks for watching, guys. If you did enjoy the video, make sure you give it a like and a subscribe. We've got plenty more coming on the E92 and there's been plenty filmed. So do check out the E92 M3 playlist. Until next time, guys, thanks for watching.